What if one of the largest earthquakes of the century wasn't just a local catastrophe, but a ticking fuse for something far more destructive, thousands of kilometers away? Could a massive rupture beneath the icy waters off Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula unleash chaos in the heart of the Philippines? And is the serene-looking Tal volcano quietly preparing for an eruption that could rival or even surpass the devastation of Mount Pinatubo? As scientists rush to assess the global consequences of the magnitude 8.8 .8 Kamchatka quake, now tied as the sixth-largest earthquake ever recorded, a disturbing possibility is taking shape, that the powerful seismic shock waves now rippling through the Earth's crust may awaken one of Southeast Asia's most dangerous volcanoes. With millions living within striking distance of Tal's restive caldera, the question is no longer if the threat is real, but whether we have enough time to act. When the ground split open beneath the frigid waters off the Kamchatka Peninsula on July 30th, 2025, Few could have imagined just how far the seismic ripples would reach. The massive magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake that erupted from the depths of the Pacific Plate marked not just a historic tectonic event, but potentially the ignition point for a volcanic crisis thousands of kilometres away. Tearing across an expanse of fault stretching roughly 300 miles or 480 kilometres long and 100 miles or 160 kilometres wide, the rupture released a burst of energy equivalent to more than one billion tons of TNT. The earth moved with terrifying force. Some parts of the seabed shifted vertically by as much as 30 feet or 9 meters, enough to generate Pacific-wide tsunami alerts and panic in multiple coastal nations. A megathrust earthquake. It happens in a subduction zone. A tectonic plate is going... In the quiet hours that followed the main shock, the U.S. Geological Survey released a chilling forecast. This was no isolated event. The USGS estimated a greater than 99% probability of continued seismic unrest across the region, including thousands of aftershocks exceeding magnitude 4, 5 and even 6. A 3% chance of another magnitude 7 or larger quake may seem modest, but alongside a 34% chance of magnitude 6 or higher aftershocks, it painted a deeply concerning picture. Scientists now warn that the region may endure over 50,000 aftershocks before this sequence settles. This titanic rupture took 3.5 minutes to unfold, long enough for seismic stations across the globe to light up in unison. Located just 12 miles or 19 kilometers below the ocean floor, the shallow thrust of the quake triggered a violent vertical displacement of water, spawning tsunami threats not only for eastern Russia and Japan, but for Alaska, Hawaii, and even as far away as Chile and the Philippines. Agencies like the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the USGS raced to deploy predictive models and tsunami early warnings to protect coastal populations. But the danger may not end with waves or ground motion alone. Earthquakes of this magnitude carry a sinister secondary risk. The ability to awaken volcanoes already simmering on the edge of eruption. Scientists are increasingly focused on areas where magma chambers are near critical pressure thresholds, sensitive enough that even the subtle passage of distant seismic waves can destabilize them. One such volcano has drawn mounting concern in Southeast Asia, Taal Volcano in the Philippines. Taal has a long history of violent behavior. Nestled in a tranquil lake in Batangas province, just 60 kilometers or 37 miles south of Manila, its picturesque setting belies its destructive potential. In 1754, it erupted for nearly seven months, burying villages and altering the landscape. In 1911, a sudden explosion took the lives of more than 1,300 people, and in January 2020, a surprise frito-magmatic eruption spewed ash over Metro Manila, forcing the evacuation of more than 300,000 residents. That 2020 eruption, rated VI4 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, was alarming but moderate. Now, however, volcanologists are warning of a far more devastating possibility. A VI6 eruption, capable of unleashing ten times or more the material released by Pinatubo in 1991, would be catastrophic. 
Pinatubo's eruption dumped 10 cubic kilometers of ash and rock into the atmosphere, reduced global temperatures by half a degree Celsius, and blanketed Luzon in ash. If tile were to erupt on a similar or even greater scale, the consequences would be unprecedented. Tile's structure makes such a scenario plausible. It is a nested caldera system with a volcano inside a lake that is itself within a much larger collapsed caldera. This makes the system vulnerable to fretomagmatic explosions, extremely violent eruptions caused by the rapid interaction of water and magma. When water from Tal Lake mixes with rising magma, it can result in massive pressure buildup and explosiveness. Now, data suggests that the Kamchatka earthquake may have set the stage for this precise scenario. Seismologists have long known that massive tectonic events can influence distant volcanic systems, particularly those already under stress. This phenomenon, dynamic triggering, occurs when seismic waves from a large earthquake travel through the Earth's crust and mantle, subtly altering the pressure balance within magma chambers. This can lead to increased magma movement, cracking of surrounding rock, and in some cases, eruption. Notable examples include increased unrest at Yellowstone following the 1992 Landers earthquake and signs of volcanic activity in the Andes following Chile's 2010 Maul quake. The Kamchatka quake, given its magnitude, shallow depth, and occurrence along a major subduction zone, fits the pattern of quakes known to have global geophysical impact. And with Tal already showing signs of unrest in early 2025, including ground inflation, sulfur dioxide emissions, and low-level steam bursts, the volcano may now be dangerously close to eruption. Initial modelling from the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, FIVOLCS, shows that seismic waves from the Kamchatka event arrived in Luzon within minutes, registering as deep tremors across Batangas and Mindoro. While imperceptible to humans, this low-frequency energy was detected by ultra-sensitive instrumentation near the Taal caldera. In the 24 hours following the quake, ground tilt anomalies and harmonic tremor patterns were detected around the volcano, prompting an increase in FIVOLX alert levels and international scrutiny. While correlation does not confirm causation, the alignment of these seismic and volcanic events has raised alarms among researchers. It may be only a matter of time before Tal responds with surface activity. Should the magma chamber breach the surface under the right conditions, the resulting explosion could produce towering ash columns, pyroclastic density currents racing across the lake, and toxic gas clouds descending upon nearby towns. Worse, the sudden collapse of the crater into the lake could trigger a base surge or lake tsunami, devastating lakeshore communities. Contingency planning is now underway. Philippine emergency authorities are reassessing evacuation zones, updating Lahar and Ashfall hazard maps, and reviewing logistics for moving hundreds of thousands of people. The current permanent danger zone, 14 kilometers or about 8.6 miles from the main crater, may prove insufficient in a worst-case VEI-6 eruption. With more than 25 million people living within 100 kilometers or 62 miles of Tal, including much of Metro Manila, even a moderate eruption could bring life-altering consequences. In understanding the gravity of what may now be building beneath the surface of Tal volcano, it is crucial to revisit its most violent outbursts, those moments in Philippine history when the mountain unleashed its full fury. Among them, none are etched more deeply into the geological and cultural memory than the 1754 eruption, the most devastating in Tal's long eruptive record. Over the course of more than six months, starting in May and continuing until December, the volcano erupted in an unrelenting series of explosions, ash falls, lava fountains, and pyroclastic flows. The skies over Batangas turned black, towns disappeared under meters of ash and rock, and the topography of the lake and island changed forever. Entire villages such as Lipa and Tanawan were forced to relocate, some permanently. Historical accounts describe darkness lasting for days, heavy ashfall reaching as far as Cavite and Manila, and a relentless assault of thunderous explosions that shook the surrounding lands. That eruption was likely a VEI-5 or higher event, involving a massive volume of ejected material and explosive energy.
Many researchers argue that this eruption closely mirrors the worst-case scenarios scientists now model for future eruptions, especially one triggered by tectonic disruptions such as those from a far-field earthquake like the one in Kamchatka. The physics behind such triggering events are increasingly well understood. While the common perception is that earthquakes and volcanoes must be close together to interact, Science has shown that long-period surface waves, especially those from massive subduction earthquakes, can travel thousands of kilometers and still affect the mechanical state of a volcanic system. These waves can induce oscillations in the magma chamber or surrounding hydrothermal system, creating small fractures or pressure changes that may allow magma to rise, gas to exsolve, and stored energy to escape violently. This is particularly true in complex caldera systems like Tals, where the interface between water, magma and hydrothermal gases is delicate and already under strain. What makes Tal especially susceptible is its setting within a freshwater lake, one that sits above a deeply pressurized magma chamber. This unique combination means that any sudden changes, such as fracturing from seismic waves, can introduce water rapidly into the magmatic conduit causing phreatomagmatic explosions. These are among the most violent types of eruptions known to science. The interaction between magma and external water causes sudden steam generation, leading to fragmentation of magma and explosive expansion. Such eruptions not only eject massive ash columns, but also generate base surges, fast-moving, ground-hugging clouds of gas, ash and rock that can race outward in all directions, as occurred during the 1965 and 1911 eruptions. The 1911 eruption, in particular, holds haunting similarities to what modern scientists fear today. Without any long-term warning signs, Tal suddenly erupted with a deafening blast that sent pyroclastic material across the lake. The resulting ash cloud darkened Manila, over 60 kilometers or 37 miles away. The eruption lasted only a few hours, but killed over 1,300 people and injured thousands more. Most of the casualties came not from lava or ashfall, but from the suffocating pyroclastic density currents and the toxic gases they carried. Now, over a century later, millions more live within that same deadly radius, and the volcano itself has not grown more forgiving. If anything, its hydrothermal system has become more volatile with increased geothermal activity and signs of persistent shallow magma movement in recent years. Instruments placed around the caldera have recorded subtle but unmistakable signs. Slight inflation of the ground surface, increased carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide emissions, and tremor patterns that suggest bubbling magma and shifting gases beneath the surface. These are precisely the kinds of preconditions that dynamic triggering effects can exploit. When an earthquake the size of the Kamchatka event sends seismic energy rippling through the Earth's crust, the waves do not simply fade into nothingness. Instead, they interact with the fluids, cracks and pressure gradients that define a volcanic system. And in a place like Tal, those interactions may be the final push toward an eruption already years in the making. What makes the current situation more unnerving is the alignment of timing. In the days since the Kamchatka quake, Tal has shown signs of subtle but accelerating activity. Several harmonic tremors, long-duration, low-frequency vibrations typical of magma movement were detected beneath Volcano Island. Ground deformation measurements from GPS stations around the lake suggest a fresh episode of uplift. Local residents have also reported the distinct smell of sulphur in the air and a low, continuous rumble coming from the caldera, a sign in the minds of many that something deep within the mountain is stirring. Although Fivolx has not raised the alert to its highest level yet, their language has shifted noticeably. Bulletins now emphasize the need for heightened vigilance and mention the possibility of sudden explosive activity. The agency has begun coordinating more closely with international observatories, including the USGS Volcano Hazards Program and the Japan Meteorological Agency, both of which are now watching Tal's seismic signals as part of a broader Pacific-wide volcanic risk assessment following the Kamchatka earthquake. These collaborations are essential 
because they allow for real-time data comparison and the rapid development of cross-border models that can better estimate eruption timing, style and potential impact zones. Using satellite-based INSAR, Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, scientists are now mapping deformation of the tall region with precision down to a few millimetres. These tools may offer the only early clues to a brewing crisis. But while science advances, the window for preparation may be narrow. With volcanic systems, there is often no clear point of no return, no single signal that screams eruption imminent. Instead, there is a storm of overlapping signals, any one of which might mean nothing alone, but together may spell catastrophe. In the silence before eruption, there is a deceptive calm, a quiet that blankets the lake, the towns and the hills around Tal with a false sense of peace. Yet beneath that tranquil surface, forces are converging that have historically rewritten the geography of the region and claimed thousands of lives. What makes this moment different is not just the seismic trigger from Kamchatka or the mounting signs of unrest. It is the sheer scale of what is now at stake. Today, over 25 million people live within reach of Tal's fury, many in dense urban centres including Metro Manila. A VEI-6 eruption, the kind feared if current conditions continue to deteriorate, would not simply devastate Batangas and nearby provinces. Ashfall could blanket the capital, crippling infrastructure, grounding flights and overwhelming hospitals. Volcanic gases could linger for weeks. Lahars and pyroclastic flows could race down river systems choked with previous deposits. This is not mere speculation. It is the historical pattern of Tal, violent, sudden, and merciless. Preparedness must no longer be passive. Evacuation plans must be reviewed, early warning systems reinforced, and public awareness campaigns elevated to national priority. A volcano does not operate on a political schedule, nor does it wait for consensus. It moves when it is ready. If this video helped you better understand the urgent science and history behind Tal's current threat, please take a moment to like, share and subscribe. Awareness is a form of preparedness, and the more informed we are, the more lives we can save. Stay alert, stay informed and stay safe.